we got to talk about some transfer news, okay? Because that's that's where everyone like tends to get, I think, most excited uh, when it comes to, to player movement, uh, rumors, and or otherwise. But uh, it's going to impact the United States women's national team a little bit. You know, players who play overseas and you want to uh, be up to date on on their club play. Uh, probably the most recent news uh, out of Lyon, essentially, with the United States women's national team midfielder Lindsay Horan is set to extend her stay uh, at Olympic Lyon beyond her initial loan spell with the team. The head coach, uh, Sonia Bonpastor, uh, also essentially confirmed that uh, Amandi Henri, uh, Katerina Macario, Sina Broom, among others, will will be leaving at the end of the season. So they will no longer you know, be part of, uh, of Leon's roster moving forward. But uh, also gave a little tidbit that uh, there are ongoing discussions with uh, Marozan and Le Salmer. So they're trying to keep the uh, trying to keep some a couple of good midfielders there, I think, in Marcos and Haran to to kind of move forward, especially I think, you know, in light that uh Amandia is yeah, really exactly. on the move. Yeah, completely. I think it's important also like the Lindsay Haran of it all staying at OL, um, because she's with the Thorns, right? She has signed a contract through twenty twenty five, I believe, with Portland Thorns, but she's been on loan with Olympic Lyon. Uh, in France, and her time there has been really, really beneficial for this player. I think we've seen the growth of Lindsay Horan as as a midfielder in her soccer IQ and her development on the pitch, and she's won a couple of trophies as well with OL, and I think her announcement to stay in France and continue playing after her loan um, was probably sad for a lot of Portland fans. They were expecting her to come back, continue to play, but you have to remember that this is a player that just did an entire season, at one, their season, uh, did a little bit of Champions League, has played a lot. And now as the season comes to a close uh, in these now weeks, she's preparing for the World Cup. And then after that, she's probably going to give her body a little bit of rest. And that's why she's not going back to Portland. Uh, but definitely sad a little bit for NWSL fans not to be able to watch Lindsay Horan after her great spell with the OL in France. You know, it was a, I mean, it was a big deal when she initially made the move. To France, um, and it was kind of with the intention of essentially returning to the NWSL Portland yeah. specifically, right? So they had actually restructured her contract a little bit so that when this initial uh, loan with OL ended, she would make eventually make her return back to NWSL and have you know be on contract with Portland. I believe it was through twenty twenty five. Yeah. So with her extending her stay in France that obviously changes some things for Portland. I'm sure once things are actually finalized and all the I's dotted and the T's crossed, et cetera, et cetera, uh, that will eventually get an update maybe on the NWSL side of things. Very curious to sort of see how that might um, play out for the Thorns and her end in the future. If she does want to um, eventually make her return back to the NWSL and with, uh, with Portland. So something to keep an eye on for sure, because Leon is such a powerhouse. They have zero yeah. problems. A lot of the time um, attracting sort of world-class talent. And this is all kind of like the first bit of transfer news out of this club since the announcement that um, Michelle, Kang is like form, right. <laughs> forming a women's soccer kind of super group. She wants to have as many women's soccer brands and kind of all work together and share resources and stuff. And it's a very, very exciting time. I think not just for Kang, but Leon as well. So we'll see how this kind of iteration of Leon Femini kind of looks moving forward, kind of in this new era, um, pivoting to England, but still staying on some transfer news tip. we got to talk a little bit about Chelsea as well, because they have been in headlines. Uh, former world record signing, Pernell Harder, announced that she's going to leave Chelsea at the end of the season, and that includes news around Chelsea captain Magdalena Eriksson as well. She also confirmed that she'll leave Chelsea at the end of the summer after six years with the club. And look, there's like the, the news with these two players are is a big it's a big deal for like two different reasons. It's like yeah. Pernell is like I mentioned that she was a world record signing for them in terms of let's it's money. Right. They, they showed her they showed her the dollar signs and said, hey, sign on this line. We want you here at Chelsea with us. You know, Emma Hayes building uh, this, this sort of super team to try to make sure that they can compete and keep that grip on Women's Super League and eventually try to get over that hump in Champions League. 
And then for Erickson, it's really big news just because of her uh, her long tenure with Chelsea what? and since everything 20... that she's accomplished. Yeah, Erickson's been there since 2017. Like, crazy, crazy. Um, and both their contracts were set to end at the end of this year. So it's it, – I don't think it's a massive surprise. I mean, it is a big surprise and definitely a big shock with how long they've been there, but it's been a long time, right? I mean, Harder joined, uh, Perneal Harder joined Chelsea in 2020. That was a three-year contract. And and the run that Chelsea went on since then um, with Emma Hayes, they won two W. WSL titles, Champion League final in 2021. Like they have reached so much success. Um, and the videos coming out of them saying that they, they weren't going to renew their contracts, like making me cry over here. <laughs> <laughs> it puts you, put you in your bills. No, yeah. it's, it's a lot. I, I think, um, look, there was a lot of joy, I think, when, when Harder made her arrival to, to Chelsea. It's, it's, it's well documented and on record out there that, that the two are partners. They do a lot of great work for LGBTQ yeah. causes. Um, and so there was a lot of excitement to have these two reunited in Chelsea. And now it's, it's rumored that they're going to both uh, head to, to Bayern Munich. It'll be a return to the Frau Bundesliga for, for Harder, where she has absolutely excelled in, in previous years with, with Wolfsburg specifically. So it will be interesting to see um, how that team looks with the two of them um, together uh, possibly contending for <laughs> titles in, in, in Bundesliga. We'll see, but it's uh it was a chunk of news that I think um, maybe had Chelsea fans feel a bad, a bad for a little bit, just because it kind of came also on the heels of, of Frank Kirby's announcement that she's going to be out for the foreseeable future yeah. with Chelsea, but not only for club, going to miss out on the world cup as well. So it sort of felt like this kind of one, two combo, perhaps if you're a, a fan of the blues, um, but don't get too down. Don't get too down because <laughs> Chelsea are in contention for some cool things still this season. And of course, we'll chat a little bit about that as well. But another bit of news before we pivot into some more Chelsea related things. There's some rumors tied to Chelsea that we want to talk about a little later in the show. But we're going to close out this portion of the news and notes segment with some NWSL related news as well. Gotham with some cool news out of Wednesday morning, announced a partnership with SL Benfica. Benfica, one of the world's most historic and best-known football clubs, and Gotham FC, the top-ranked club in the NWSL, are excited to announce a transformative partnership aimed at advancing women's soccer development and expanding their global reach. The statement read this morning. I liked to see this in my inbox this morning. It was cool to see more of this throughout NWSL. These, uh, they're referred to as these strategic partnerships between NWSL sides and a lot of European clubs, um, clubs that have typically featured in Champions League. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw the announcement of Red Stars and Wolfsburg earlier in the 2023 season, kind of to open up the new year. And, um, Prior to Michelle King having um, overseeing things with uh, Olympic Leonais Feminino, she was really interested in how this dynamic of having like kind of several women's clubs under one umbrella can look. But prior to her making that official, OL, Club America, and The Rain also announced a bit of a trio of partnership as well. So, I'm, again, I'm very curious of where Kang is going to lead some of these things moving forward. Um, what does that mean for, for Club America, who had engaged in this strategic partnership with OL Rain, who is now up for sale, uh, and Lyon, who now has a specific uh, executive board to kind of report to with Kang at the helm. So, we're seeing a lot more of these in NWSL, and uh, I'm all for it. I think they're yeah. very unique, and they provide certain resources and opportunities that maybe you think a little bit outside of, of the box for. So I'm curious as to how, uh, what we'll see between Gotham and Befica, between yeah. the two of them in these in the early stages of this partnership. Yeah, I'm excited to see kind of how it unfolds. I, I definitely think Gotham was taking a look at some of the other clubs, as you mentioned, that have partnerships um, with overseas clubs and kind of how that has benefited them. Like my, the first thing that comes to mind is always Chicago Red Stars and Wolfsburg and their partnership um, that allowed Tierna Davidson to train in the Red Stars offseason. She was coming back from her ACL injury and 
Chicago Red Stars weren't playing games and they weren't having organized training. And instead of training on her own to get back into shape, she went over to Wolfsburg and started training with them and playing with them as, as a training player, which allowed her at coming back from that ACL injury to get back on the pitch a little bit faster, I believe. So to me, that was that's like one of the examples that just jumps out in my mind as a really good way yeah. to kind of utilize both of these clubs and sending personnel back and forth and, and things like that. Yeah, we already, I mean, we're sticking with Wolfsburg. So, I mean, we already have seen it. We, we saw the announcement of, of Sandra Stark from Wolfsburg to the Red Stars on a short loan. She will be with the Red Stars, I believe, through, um, through June ahead of, you know, the World Cup. And so uh, we'll see how she continues to try to make an impact there. But that's another example. I mean, and, and Gotham, um, including that in their, in their statement uh, as well, they want to make sure that they, you know, all have – uh, Benfica as part of like the the, the brand expansion, right? It embark on tr strategic initiatives, um, and that's going to include when you're talking about strategic initiatives. I mean, that's going to include the possibility of you know future player transactions. So all that stuff is very exciting when you're like thinking and reading into some of these um, announcements with with partnerships between um, two clubs or multiple clubs uh, moving forward. So um, it was fun to see that drop early enough to where we were able to grab yeah. it and include it in our news and notes segment because one thing that happens when we go live is news breaks always <laughs> always is when we do like our news and notes it was cool to sort of see this come through the pipeline and then be able to snag that and chat about it here with everyone 